And welcome back to the anime and manga news for the week ending June 8th, 2012. Probably the big thing that folks have been looking forward to. The Madoka Magical films have been slated for October 6th and 13th of this year. That's correct. So you can look forward to the Madoka Magical films coming out in eh, quite a few months away. But those of you waiting, that's coming out. Uh, starting with Madoka Magica, the movie be- part one, the beginning story. Silly name. Oh, well. Uh, let's see here. Moving on. So a Studio Ghibli film that came out uh, a while back over in Japan from Up on Poppy Hill by Goro Miyazaki, the son of Hayao Miyazaki. Well, it hasn't been released over here in America because Disney doesn't have the rights to that. They have the rights to Hayao Miyazaki's movies. And some of the, they've gotten the rights to some of the other Studio Ghibli films, but they don't automatically have the rights to all of them. So a company called G-Kids has announced that they have acquired the North American rights to From Up on Poppy Hill, and they plan to release the film next March, which will help the film qualify for the 2013 Academy Awards, which would be awesome. Uh, They have not mentioned if they have theatrical and home video rights, though that's likely. So that's what's going on. What's interesting is Studio Ghibli itself is producing the English dub of the film, with Kathleen Kennedy and Frank Marshall co-executive producing. So good to see more Studio Ghibli coming over to our shores. Let's see here. Meanwhile, uh, here's an interesting little anime thing. Some of you may have noticed this video on my channel, or a video on my channel, talking about the Young Animator Training Project, which came out a couple years ago. Several anime studios coming together to fund special anime short films by some of their best young animators. Well, they've announced they're moving forward with the 2012 Young Animator Training Project. They've raised about half a million dollars to make that. There'll be a total of four of them. Uh, one from Gonzo, one from Trigger, one from Studio Pero, and one from Madhouse. So that's pretty awesome. There are um, uh, There's some more information over on AnimeNewsNetwork.com as always, but always good to see that the anime industry is funding more work by young animators and it's not going to be another typical title. It'll be something imaginative that they come up with. That's pretty cool. Moving on to some manga news. Uh, actually, um, anime news for first. There's still a few bits more there. This just caught my eye. Released this week, it's a re-release of the Boogie Pop Phantom DVD Complete TV series. This is a series that came out uh, over a decade ago in Japan and over here. Suggested retail price, 30 bucks for the entire series. I think it's 13 episodes. And one of the original dark, dramatic anime series to make it over here to these shores. So if you're interested, that's out there now, which is pretty awesome. And uh, the Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn Blu-ray Volume 5 should drop today if you can get it. Unfortunately, they've been having trouble shipping it out. I pre-ordered it on Amazon. It hasn't shown up yet. But that should be coming out in the next day or two, hopefully. Moving on to manga news. Uh, The 13th volume of the Neon Genesis Evangelion manga will be released on November 2nd in Japan and the U.S. That's correct. So the West will be getting a simultaneous release with the manga, which is awesome. I'd love to see more of these simultaneous releases of manga. So you can see where the story is going there. This is the retelling of the original TV series by the character designer who's kind of redrawing it. So cool, cool stuff. Uh, lovely illustration for it, focusing very much on Rey and Asuka's breasts. Meanwhile, Lark on CL, which is a Japanese rock band as I was very definitively told, um, has opened voting to decide where they will be next on their world tour. So (coughs) you can go to the website and vote on where they should actually show up, which is pretty darn nice of them. Moving back to Japan world, the Tokyo Metropolitan Government's Youth Healthy Development Council has recently announced that they looked at Yosuga no Sora um, as to whether it should be allowed to be viewed and made available in Tokyo, and they said yes. Now, this is important because of the Tokyo Youth Ordinance Amendment Bill, or Bill Amendment, rather, which came out uh, a while ago and was seen as this, essentially a way of um, camping down a cramp and, and forcing anything that was not good for kids off the shelves in the Tokyo metropolitan area. The idea was they could invoke this law of saying that something that was an anime or a manga release 
was inappropriate for children and thus effectively ban it from sale. And they looked at Yosuke no Sora, the TV series, which features like on-screen naked incest sex. Sorry for any kids who are watching this. Anyway, and they said it was fine. You can show that. No problem. So I don't think the amendment is too big of a censorship problem. Just saying. Moving on, manga news. Back over on this side of the Pacific, the fifth volume of the Sailor Moon manga came out recently, and it is number two in the top 20 graphic novels in American bookstores for May. So it came out, uh, I think, two, three weeks ago. So the number two best-selling graphic novel in America. That's pretty darn awesome. So good to hear that, that Sailor Moon is still chugging along. Uh, in somewhat sadder news, we talked a while back about how 4Kids is basically dumping the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise. Well, there's a bit more news on that. <clears throat> Konami has announced that they're looking after it, um, as is Saban, who already announced that they were trying to grab those Yu-Gi-Oh! assets. And in fact, <coughs> excuse me, um, Konami has said they're actually willing to split it up between themselves and Saban's Kids Co. Media Ventures. So, interesting to see how that would work out. But it does look like Yu-Gi-Oh! will end up somewhere. Big shock. Uh, moving on to a little bit of interesting con news. Otakon, which is a big East Coast, West, uh, American East Coast anime convention, has announced uh, two of their guests for this year. Tetsuya Kakihara, a voice actor and musician, probably best known as Simon in Gurren Lagann, but perhaps more importantly, Aya Hirano will be at Otakon. Now, this is remarkable because Otakon is on the east coast of the U.S. It takes, you know, as hard as it is to get folks across the Pacific to, say, the west coast of the U.S., being able to get them all the way across another three or four hours via plane is a pretty darn cool thing. So, nice to see that well, American anime cons are still dragging people from Japan all the way across. So, that's pretty darn cool. Um, for those who don't know, Aya Hirano was Haruhi Suzumiya, Lumiere and Kitty Grade, Misa and Death Note, um, and uh, main character in Lucky Star, and so forth and so on. Anyway, um, she also actually spent some time in the U.S. as a child, so that's pretty cool. Also in voice acting news, Steve Bloom, arguably best known as Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop, but done a lot of other things, recently received a Guinness World Record as the most prolific video game actor in the world, with, as of May 10th, 261 credited appearances in video games. Wow. Good on you, Steve Bloom. Awesome guy. Pretty darn good voice actor, too. Moving on to some of the final wacky news. Um, a new clone of 2chan has appeared. So those of you who are aware of 4chan over here, it's based off of a a message board called Tuchan in Japan. Um, there's a new site that's opened up called Open Tuchan, in which all the material is open under Creative Commons. Because technically, <clears throat> without anything being explicitly listed as one way or the other on Tuchan, it's all under copyright. So you can't like copy and paste stuff off of Tuchan, technically. Uh, it, it's not put on public domain or anything like that, which may be the same for 4chan, maybe the same for a lot of the other message boards. Who actually has the rights to that stuff? It's an open question. So there's this now an open Tuchan over in, J in Japan. We'll see if anyone uses it. Who knows? Finally, there is a Gundam hotel room in the works. The Kekyu Corporation will be uh, offering a Gundam-themed room starting on June 29th uh, in celebration of the Gundam Front Tokyo Entertainment Complex opening soon near the uh, full-size Gundam statue. It'll be the Room G Special Type Suite, featuring a living room uh, patterned after the Earth Federation and a bedroom patterned after Xeon, which actually fits in a disturbing way. About 900 square feet, which is pretty darn good. Gundam-themed chairs and towels and room keys and so forth and so on. With a Gundam-themed room service menu. That's interesting. So, that's all the news fit to print this week. It's been an interesting week or two. And uh, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next week.